gimmicky character. It's really gimmicky. Uh -huh, yeah, K. Rule is definitely a gimmicky character. Um, All right. Anyways, game one. Okay, that giant nair looks like it's good for yeah, the Yeah, uh, one thing away. about this matchup I will say though is that uh, it, it's the same thing with every single matchup that DD fights a uh, character who's really good at comboing. He's just susceptible to combo food and like he doesn't have really that many good like get off me tools. So we got okay. uh, TFO going out to an early lead, had a nice little ledge trap and he's got him back at the ledge. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, that yeah. would have killed. Mm -hmm. That was actually really smart. Yeah, I think it, yeah, it's because of what's it called Game Watch Virtual. They're like, look at that. That damage is also really nice from Game Watch. All right. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm pretty sure he all he has to get. I'm pretty sure at this percent you just get a down smash and then probably just kill. Yeah, no, it would it would it would definitely kill at this percent. But um, let's see if he can get in to get us. Oh, he tried reflecting off. the Gordo back. Okay. Both players trying to feel out each other. Okay, the Gordo almost hit him. That would have been bad. He's actually uh, he's actually using the bucket in situations where he knows that he'll probably get hit if he doesn't. Like there's that dire situation, so he's using the bucket in those like instances. Like right there, I don't think he should have used it. But like if he's using like right there, he was at the ledge. Yeah, that's because he knows he's gonna get ledge trapped if he doesn't. That's the one thing you gotta watch out for with the bucket is it doesn't reflect projectiles. Oh, there we go. That's the first talk above Game Watch's head. So now, have to be careful. now here comes the issue. If he if he can kill a TFO quick, quickly, quicker before he starts getting all this percentage, and we know Game Watch is really like character, so he could die literally right now. Oh wow, nice, nice forward smash. All right, but uh, TFO still has to lead against Nip. A lot of extra credit here. Mm -hmm. Trying um, to go for a dash attack. Game Watch can make it up quickly, but the issue is is that you got to rack up a lot of damage on DD to be able to kill him. Yeah. Dude, I'm surprised he's not uh, exorbing the, gor the Gordos. Like, exorbing them and then throwing them back. Is there... Do you think there's a TFO? reason why? Yeah. Hmm, I'm not sure. Maybe because if he does that and then it gets reflected back, it'll be super powerful from being reflected I mean, twice. Wouldn't you, I mean, wouldn't you think of a situation where he would... Uh, he would like reflect the the border with the bucket, right? And then he would absorb it and then throw it back because I'm not sure if he has enough time to. Uh, well, you can just hold the bucket out. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. That's you good don't point. have to put it away. Yeah. So if uh, Nip catches on today, he can potentially. Take oh, he jumped into it. That's unfortunate. Take a really early stock, but here we go. TFO, he's got the got a decent lead right now. Yeah, TFO got a really decent. TFO's been in the lead this entire game, actually. Which yeah, is actually except for the first few seconds. Yeah. But, um, Oh, oh, there we go. They, that, that's yeah. what you were talking about. Exactly. He could just hold the ball. Oh, out. okay. And I think Game Watch. I mean, we haven't seen Nip like uh, use up smash. I, I'm not sure if up smash is as good as it was in the last game, but I'm pretty sure it would, still would have been bad to, a bad tool to use. Um, up smash is good. The, it's definitely not as good as it was in Smash Four with how the armor works. But the issue is, is that he's not landing like anywhere near Game and Watch, really. So it's gonna be tough for him to get that up. Yeah, smash off. like he's spacing himself to where he, like the DD's, like uh, TFO spacing himself to where he doesn't have to really like approach Nip. And then, and then Nip tries to approach. He has the option of like getting away safely. All right, Gordo. TFO is just controlling a lot of space yeah, he, with yeah, his Gordo. Yeah, he has a lot of. I think Nip's kind of. Uh, What's it called? He's kind of like, how should I say? He's kind of giving up too much space too. Like he's giving up space that he has room to go in, but he's not doing it. All right, here we go. Big percentage. Definitely, especially when he has a disjoint like Nair that he can use to knock the Gordo back. He really doesn't have to stand and chill or retreat. Yeah. Even up B will, will send the Gordo back because it's invincible on startup. So he's got a lot of options to deal with it. But a lot of times he's just getting caught like that, overextending an advantage and... Um, Ooh, that would have been death had it not been uh, Sour Spot. Uh, is he dead? Oh, that was poor. I think that was poor DI. I think so. Yeah, that was poor DI. Game it didn't Watch is really light, so it's tough for me to tell. So. Yeah. It just looked really weird. It probably looked like a uh, poor DI. TFO taking game Yeah, one. but uh, what I would like to see Nip do in this game is uh, not give him too, give uh, TFO too much space. And uh, try and abuse Didi's uh, lack of plenty options. Because the one thing about Didi that you that uh, that is noticeable is that Didi has pretty poor landing options, and that goes for most heavies in this game. Yeah, it for Didi, he either can like land with Gordo, 
or he can mix it up and land with Nair, which doesn't have a lot of lag. But, you know, good players can call those out pretty easily. Um, he doesn't have great aerial drift, but he does have jumps to mix it up, too. Yeah. All right, so Nip switched to K-Roll, and I'm not sure if this change is better or for the worse. I think it's a for, for a little bit of the worse, but we don't know. He could probably have someone that uh, that could ca catch us off guard. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, I was thinking he would switch to K-Roll just because it gives him a little more room for error. You know, you're not going to see him die at 80%. Unless he gets hit by like a charge smash attack, which really shouldn't happen. So let's see if uh, K Rule's zoning comes into play. He can put projectiles out a lot faster than DD can, so he can he can kind of control space. Ooh, exactly. nice. Uh, the one thing I the one thing that K Rule and DD the K Rule and DD kind of share the same weaknesses, but the reason why uh, I think DD's better than K Rule is because DD has a uh, what's it called. Uh, he's not relying on like one. He's, he's relying on Gorda, but it's not like as bad as like K. Rool or Crown, because K. Rool really depends on Crown in order to do anything. Really, you take Crown away from uh, K. Rool, his character like degrades. Yeah, and I think DDD's got got more mix-ups because he could change the angle. Oh no! Oh, okay, he's fine. He's okay. He's DDD, but um, he could change the angle of the Gordo to mix up his neutral. Um, and I think DDD has superior ledge trapping, where like. K. Rool's ledge trapping is kind of gimmicky because he's got the suck, but like, you know, it's easily played around, but it couldn't could catch people off guard. Yeah. Oh, okay. He's going for the down B. That's an interesting take, though. Going for down B instead of just uh, waiting for. Ooh. Ah, it seems like Nip's switch to K. Rool is actually working out for him. Yeah, definitely, definitely paying off, and now you're seeing that survivability. Mm -hmm. Nip at 180, um, and you know he's still not gonna die unless oh Ooh. the jab block. Oh, he tried to go for it. He had the read. He really did. He could have got so much off that with the down that, uh, So you saw how uh, Kiro lost the crown, right? Yeah. Is that even though he lost the crown, Nip still decided to go ahead and pressure because he knows that he can do that with the lead he has. Yeah, Nip's getting a little ambitious. Oh, okay, that was something. that was uh, OG. <laughs> but uh, Nip I think the Gordo was like the death, but then he wanted to add a little bit more spice to it. Okay, yeah. here, all right. So he caught the crown. Oh, he threw it down. What? Oh, he still has it or no? I can't tell if he still. Yeah, he, yeah, still has, he has it. it. Oh, okay, that was weird. <laughs> okay, he's actually making sure that uh, Nip does not get the crown. That's actually like what you want to do. Versus oh, okay, nice. He's we tech alive. those and we die. <laughs> oh wow! We tech and then we die, unfortunately. Well, Nip with the character change coming in clutch for him. Let's see how. Uh, yep. Let's see how TFO adapts. Mm -hmm. Uh, one thing I will say that TFO could do is uh, hmm. Like as you see, like Nip's like, throwing the crown out like every single time. Like there's a certain distance between both of them. And then uh, TFO's uh, answer is Gordo. I think what TFO needs to do is that instead of uh, his answer being Gordo, he could try and catch the crown and then put it his so that he's an advantage and that forces Nip to approach. Well, you you can't um you can't catch the crown when it's uh, thrown at you when K Rule throws it at you. I mean, like what's it called? Just inhale it. Like not inhale it, but like you have to hit you have to hit K Rule. Yeah, you have so to hit him. So if you hit it, so if he him. hits, if finds the way to hit K Rule while the crown is out, like that. Then he could uh, he could try and see if he could do something about it. But anyways, game three, going on to town and city. Now I'm not sure why TFO picked this stage is better for DD or not, but let's see. Um, I know that town and city has smaller side blast zones, so maybe he's hoping that he can uh, get some earlier kills on Nip with the ledge trapping. Um, that's Nip. the only thing I could see. Maybe he has some mix-ups getting off ledge with the platforms being there. Nip has some really nice conversions off his uh, projectiles. That was a little weird. Oh, nice. Ooh, that was very nice. Ooh, uh, oh, the crown away. Oh, okay, but he, is, he has stage control, so he'll be the one to get it back when it respawns. Or no, he lost the stage control. And it went right to Nip. Mm -hmm. I think losing stage control versus K rule is one of the worst things that could happen. Yeah, and uh, you know, if you just keep center stage against K. Rule, there's not too much he can do. Mm -hmm. This is where DD excels, but going for the hammer, I'm not uh, sure about that. Oh, roll twice. I kind of don't agree with that. He could have went for something else. Oh, okay, knowing that he probably will fucking double jump. 
seen a lot of uh, Clanky stains to teach that. Here we go. And th there it goes again is the, um, you know, K rules ledge trapping. While gimmicky, if you're not prepared for it, it can definitely kill you relatively early. I love the spacing on that back, on yeah, how you did back air. Yeah. He was, just waiting, he was waiting for the moment where Nip would just mess up and whiff to where he could kill him. Oh, okay. I think uh, TFO is also jumping a little bit too much. Like, there's situations where he doesn't really need to jump. Yeah, he d um, he's just getting hit by projectiles unnecessarily. Yeah. Goes for the up throw, not sure why, but... Um, it's probably saving it for Lyft for the down throw when he's at... Uh, no, because uh, yeah, I forgot they nerfed the he could just He could just F he could down throw and get damage with up tilt, or he could F throw to put DD in a ledge trap situation. Oh, the pe oh that was... Oh, no! He ran... I think if he waited a little bit more, he would have made it back. Oh, definitely. He had a he had a few more jumps to use. Okay. Now TFO has to make something happen here because right now Nip has a a good lead. Yeah, it's very possible with DDD's ledge trapping to potentially yeah. get an early kill. Mm -hmm. And see, he's just he's just uh, running. Yeah, he's running just like yeah. Nip was just making uh, TFO play his game a lot a lot easier. It's like he's abusing TFO's habits, and then he's just using that to his advantage. Oh, okay. I see he was going there. Yeah, I'm not too sure if the constant, if charging the I hammer for your ledge strap. Right yeah, he's dead right here. All right. So that's it. Nip with the switch, the K-Roll, surprising us. We're taking it.